B. Opening place and built-in classes by Jesus Espino. Jesus, are you still here? Are you here? You went for, okay, fine. Other, <laughs> Jesus, are you here? Yes, you are. Okay, go and get set up. Uh, after that will be Freelance Python by Pablo Ceballos. Are you here, Pablo? Pablo, stay aquí. Okay, no, we can skip that. Python Argentina, or Python Argentina community. Is someone here to give that one? Yeah, come to the front. Okay, we're also going to have <laughs> uh, a talk on Vim, Neo Vim, and Python by Marcus Scribble. Marcus, are you here on Vim? Excellent, come near the front so we can have you. We're going to have RLY question mark. Well, I three heart Python because. By Alexis. Alexis, are you here? Excellent. You're near enough. Come to the front so you can run up. Da -da -da -da. There you go. Number talk number 21 is just called Just Because You Can. Who proposed that? Just Because You Can. All right, you're nearby. Fantastic. And the final one is by Qtile by Guillaume Grelin. Are you around, Guillaume? Okay, fantastic. Da -da -da -da. Hey, Zeus, how are you getting on? It's working okay. So, would you like to hear the story about the man with an orange for a head? Bearing in mind, bearing in mind, there's a strong likelihood that I won't be able to finish it. So bearing that in mind, put your hands up if you want to hear the man for an orange for a head story, or at least the beginning of it. Okay, now everybody else hates you. Yeah. And uh, anybody that's been volunteering for the event or we want to recruit some new volunteers, we have to strip this whole building tonight. Now, all the sponsors have stripped all their own stands and a lot of the stuff is gone, but there are still many things we have to get out of the building. So if you've been moved to thinking, hey, I would like to volunteer for this conference, it's not too late, you can help this evening, come up to the registration desk, find an organizer, even helping out for 10, 20 minutes, half an hour, carrying a few boxes from A to B will help move this conference from here to the sprints for tomorrow. So a last minute volunteering would be very much appreciated. Anyone can do that. Hello. Oh, okay, look at this. Yeah, yeah, there's some secret talks at the top here. Great. All right, who here has got Python 3 as default in Fedora? Robert, that's you, very good. Motivated to find the missing talks there. And pythonjobs.github.io. Daniel, are you here? Yep, okay, good. So what have we got? In fact, okay, so it'll be Jesus, then it'll be uh, Robert, and then it'll be Daniel. And then it will be Pablo, and then there will be more talks, and are oh, you ready, Jesus? Yep, give Jesus a big hand. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, how many of you uh, are Ruby programmers? Ruby. Okay. One, two? Okay, okay. It's okay. Well, uh, opening Python built-in classes. What's the problem? Uh, the problem is the, Py the C Python classes are closed. Uh, I try to set uh, the in class uh, X attribute to three, and the C Python interpreter uh, don't allow me. Well, the solution. The solution is master key. Master key is a module that I have programmed, uh, which allow to open classes. I can open the, the in class and set the, uh, the X attribute to the class. And now all integrators uh, uh, have the X attribute. Which application have this, this module? This module uh, allows to fix broken float comparisons. Uh, for example, uh, these, are, these are the same, okay? Uh, it's, it's the same and uh, the assertion fail. Uh, this, uh, when, with uh, open classes, I can uh, override the, uh, the quality to allow some kind of, of difference, and for example, allow to fix a broken test uh, that uh, have um, float comparisons. And well, now, is true and okay, it's false. It's okay. Uh, the left sheet operator uh, is 
I can left shift a uh, integer and get the left shift, the binary left shift. It's okay, but this have no sense for, for the people who knows decimal, not binary. Uh, well, uh, this is a, a solution. <laughs> well, now works. Now have sense. Well, uh, more semantic uh, bool representation. If I ask uh, the C Python interpreter to say me if true is true, say true, and if true is false, say false. Okay, but but I prefer this this approach. True is true, yes. <laughs> true is false, no. It's, it's okay. It's, but true is false. Uh, we we need a uh, uh, more Ruby's Python, I think. <laughs> uh, well, I can import Rubint, <laughs> and now I have three times print, and or three up to five print, or down to one. Uh, you can close your own classes. You can define a class, use master key to close the class, and now I can uh, modify the class. <laughs> well, of course, this is a joke. <laughs> but, 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 the code is real, okay? <laughs> Here's the block magic, okay? Uh, with C types and setting up a flag uh, in the classes you can uh, open the classes, but of course uh, this is really unstable, and uh, don't, don't use this. Uh, and here's the code. Uh, if you want to evolve this solution, uh, please don't, don't do it. <laughs> All right, Python 3D Fort and Fedora. Robert, welcome. So this man walks into a bar and he sees that only the barman and a man with an orange for a head are in there. So he walks up to the barman and he goes, that's a little strange, has that guy over there got, a, got an orange for a head? And the barman goes, yeah. Actually, he's a really nice guy. If you buy him a beer, he'll probably tell you the story. He goes, oh, okay. So he wanders over to our man with an orange for a head and, and he says, oh, hello, um, can I buy you a drink? And uh, you know, I couldn't, couldn't help but notice that um, you seem to have a you know, a small orange instead of a head. I'd just like to give a shout out to uh, Larry Hastings who reminded me of this joke uh, the other day. Um, so he goes, yeah, 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 I've got an orange for a head. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a funny story actually. Um, would you believe that uh, I was uh, walking down the beach and I saw a lamp that had washed up, an old antique looking lamp, and I picked it up and I rubbed it and uh, out came a genie, just like in a joke. Um, and the genie says, oh, thank you for liberating me from the, la the lamp, oh master. Uh, you now have three wishes, anything your hearts desire. And uh, in the bar, the guy's like, wow, that's amazing. So, so what was your first wish? And he goes, well, my first wish was that I would be fabulously wealthy. He goes, okay, I would wish that too, I think. Um, did, did it happen? What happened? He goes, well, the genie waved his arms and said abracadabra, and there was a puff of smoke, and uh, suddenly, um, I, like, a Ferrari pulls up next to me, and I look at my bank balance on my mobile app that uh, doesn't run on my Blackberry, um, but I've got a newer phone than that because I'm fabulously rich now, he says, um, and I find out my bank balance is huge, I'm very rich and wonderful. Um, and he goes, oh, okay, that's amazing, that's very lucky. Um, what, was your, uh, what was your second wish? Uh, and the man goes, well, um, I wish that I would meet um, a life partner to uh, be happy with uh, and that they would be beautiful and supremely intelligent. Uh, and, uh, and he goes, what happened next? He goes, well, sure enough, the genie says, your wish is my command. And, and uh, the door of the Ferrari opens and out comes the most beautiful and intelligent person I've ever met. And I just knew we were going to be life partners forever. Are you ready to give your talk? Yes, but, uh, but it will be without the slides. Okay. So, right. so we've got two wishes down. And next, uh, take it away. Hi everyone, I'm Robert Kuska. I work for Red Hat and I'm a member of Python group in Fedora. And uh, we have this Python 3 as default change and I would like to give you some sort of status update about it. In case you are not very familiar with Fedora and how Fedora operates, 
it's uh, when you want to make such a change, like making Python 3 default in Fedora, you have to make a proposal, so-called the change. And uh, next thing is uh, the change is being wrote on, and if it's accepted, you can work on it, then it is tested, and then it is implemented in Fedora, and everyone is happy. <laughs> so, what, what does Python 3 as default mean for Fedora? Uh, we would like to have Python 3 as the only interpreter on, in the default installations. This means that when you install Fedora from Fedora DVD and you type Python, it will not work because there will be no Python 2. And because of that, the name of the change was uh, slightly changed to, to be Fedora as, uh, to ch was changed to Python 3 on, in the default installations of Fedora. So our target is Fedora 23, and Fedora 23 will be released at the end of the October this year. I have some links uh, for this change where you can find more detailed information, but sadly, uh, I can make it work <laughs> to show you. So, uh, what, does it, uh, what does it not mean? our change. We are not getting rid of, of Python, 3, Python 2, you can still install it. And also, there will be no change in UserBeam Python. UserBeam Python will still be Python 2. Um, this is because the pep you are familiar with, I guess, I don't really recall the name, uh, the number. And, but it is important to note that, that there is a proposal by Geoffrey Thomas from Debian to make user in Python a sort of, I don't know how to say it, sort of switcher. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but I don't recall if it was already posted on Python Dev. Was it or was it not? But I can, I can send you a link to this proposal if you are interested. So what do we cover in Fedora? We have uh, many, really, uh, many products, so-called flavors. Uh, namely, it is workstation and cloud, which are already covered, and right now should be switched to Python 3. Then there is uh, Atomic, and there is a problem with Python 3, as we need Python 2 or Atomic because of Ansible because there are many scripts in Ansible which runs only on Python 2. And then there is the last but not least product called Server. And there are really two big projects we are working to port on. And those are Free IPA and Samba. We got Free IPA covered. But there is a big problem with Samba as, we, as there is lack of reviewers. For our patch, for our patches, and that basically all. Fabulous, uh, Python jobs, Daniel. So where are we? We've got. Uh, okay, he's had uh, he's had two wishes so far. The first wish, fabulously wealthy. The second wish, the love of his life. Um, and he goes, wow, so that happened too. Yes, I met the love of my life. That's amazing. So back in the bar, he goes, wow, good. That's a really an amazing story. So um, what, was your, uh, what was your third and final wish? Uh, and the man with an orange for a head says, well, um, I wished I could have an orange for a head. <laughs> yeah, it's meta. Hands up, who's, like, who says that's their favorite joke of the week so far? These guys, quite a lot of people. All right. I'll tell more like that in future. Take it away, Dan. Um, OK, so I'm going to tell you a story that, uh, uh, from the dim and distant uh, past of March. Um, and uh, uh, I was at work, and uh, my colleague Sal turned to me and said, what would it take to write a jobs board 
because we were recruiting and uh, the python.org jobs board had been down for a year. Uh, I was like, you know, if I was going to write it, I would write it as a static site. Uh, I'd uh, generate it, uh, like have it hosted on GitHub and you could have it generated uh, whenever you commit, maybe in Python anywhere. Um, and uh, it would be, you know, a community project to maintain. And uh, Steve, uh, my colleague, wandered up during the conversation and contributed some ideas like building it in Hyde, with Hyde and uh, in Travis. Um, and uh, Steve wandered up and I said, but of course we shouldn't do that because what we should do is contribute to the Python Software Foundation's project and uh, Python.org jobs board. Um, but uh, Steve had missed that bit and so he went away and wrote it. And uh, <laughs> it is pythonjobs.github.io. <coughs> so this is a community uh, project uh, if you want to, uh, to list jobs. If you're looking for a job, this is up. Um, uh, we... Uh, launched it in March, and uh, I, uh, like a week later, the Python.org jobs board came back. So, <laughs> uh, so that's that's Python.org uh, jobs board. So uh, uh, that is an option as well if you want to find a job or uh, or list a job. Um, if you want to list a job on ads, you just go to GitHub and uh, uh, just send us a pull request, and it's like Markdown uh, and YAML. Um, but uh, so Python Jobs was written by Steve in a, you know, a couple of nights over a couple of weeks. Um, and we sat, when, we, when we were discussing this, when we were kicking ideas around, um, we thought we were trying to think of ways to minimize the, the amount of uh, uh, work involved in setting this thing up and running it over time. And so our stack was just sort of GitHub uh, and the uh, like off-the-shelf software as a service. And there is a tiny amount of code there. Uh, and uh, not like a dig at Python.org, because they had like sort of loftier ambitions, but it's like a, your classic Django and Postgres and uh, uh, like a Django app for tagging. And then there's like all of this approval workflow where you list a job and somebody's going to review it and then it goes up. Um, and that took a year to write. So I think, uh, again, not a dig at PSF. Uh, it's uh, Python.org jobs board is a much needed resource. Uh, I encourage you to. Uh, to share your jobs there if you're recruiting. Um, but I do think that uh, minimizing or maximizing the amount of work not done is essential. That's from the Agile uh, principles. Um, and uh, uh, so thinking very hard about how to not write code is your best bet for, uh, for doing that, in fact. Um, and uh, also in uh, Maximize the amount of work not done. If there's a project that's just about to uh, to go out the door, contribute to that. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, we have to be out of the venue probably in about the next ten minutes. So, uh, Pablo Ceballos on freelance Python. Are you here, Pablo? Nope. Python Argentina. Hooray! Da -da -da. So this, uh, the, this guy walks into a bar, and there's only the barman and a man with an orange for a head. <laughs> Did you know that there's, um, there's a, a, I mean, like in, in the theory of, of comedians, we take to say that there's uh, two types of comedy. There's comedy based on repetition. And there's comedy based on repetition. Thank you very much. OK, I'm here all week. All right, all right, all right. There you go. Actually, it's all about timing. right? You want to get the answer in there just as the person is guessing it or just before. Somebody else once said that um, one of the magical things about comedy is maybe it's a little bit the same as Oops. the instinct for science. So you take a series of facts, and you give them an interpretation. That's the structure of any joke. You go, oh, OK, here it is. It's one of those classic jokes about you know, a genie, and the genie is going to misinterpret the third one, and that's why he's got a 12-inch pianist. Uh, and then you surprise them and cause them to reinterpret the facts. So the punchline causes you to understand the previous events differently and in a wider way. Um, and in some ways, that's a lot like uh, scientific progress. Like a, a new scientific insight takes you to, to, causes you to look at existing observations in a new way. Maybe. Maybe the Earth goes around the sun, not the sun goes around the Earth. Doom. 
What do you think about that? Convincing? Yes. Fantastic. Um, somebody else, uh, Isaac Asimov, once wrote a short story um, where uh, they built a sort of supercomputer, um, and the researchers that were programming the computer said, right, we'd like you to work on, uh, on um, a problem that we have, which is jokes. We don't understand jokes. They don't seem to make any sense. There's no, there seems to be no way of generating jokes. And also, you never meet someone who's actually invented a joke. You only ever hear people retelling jokes. So like, what kind of strange combination of, of human psychology is this joke thing? And the computer goes away and thinks about it for a long time. Okay. And it takes in loads of data. You want to start okay. it like this? Yeah, that's okay. Okay, take it away. Huh? <laughs> Hi, my name is Cynthia. I'm from Argentina. I came with two friends here, and I wasn't supposed to be here talking. But this morning, I got this tweet about a friend that he's in Argentina, and, <laughs> and he started insisting, so here I am. So uh, Python Argentina's mission is about to integrate uh, Argentina and Python users, spread the world, the, our Pythonic world, and organize all kinds of Python events. We have a very large community that keeps growing each year. We have uh, over 105,000 members, not only from Argentina, but from all Latin America and Spain. We have a cool mailing list. An IRC channel is uh, PR at Freenode. And we call the channel of love because PR means in Hindi, love. Mm. Uh, we have a new web python.org.har that is made with Django and Python 3. Uh, we have a lot of meetups uh, all around the country that is so big. We have Buenos Aires Python meetup. We have Django, Buenos, Buenos Aires Django meetup. We have La Plata Python meetup. Patagonia Python meetup. Uh, Northeast Python meetup. And we are starting a lot of, a lot of more meetups all around the country. We also have pie camps that those are like four days, uh, complete sprint days. We just have Wi-Fi, food, Python in the middle of nowhere, and we had a lot of fun. We also have our um, PyCon conference in Argentina since 19, sorry, since 2000, 2009. We have high quality talks, international keynotes, and the most important thing for us is that it's always free. Our conferences are always free and everybody can come. So this year, uh, PyCon will be in uh, Mendoza. So if you want to try an amazing wine, you should come here. <laughs> and the last thing I want to talk about is about a project uh, that is called Argentina in Python. And it's a personal project uh, of a friend of mine that his name is Manuel Kaufman. And his nickname is Umitos, that means uh, Mr. Smokesman. And he is traveling all around the country with his car. That's why there's a logo, it's a, it's a, it's a Python car. He's traveling all, all around the country, uh, spreading the word about Python. That's, that's Manuel and her friend Joanna. They've been traveling since last year. And uh, they, they've made more than 5,000 kilometers, and these are all the cities that they, they've been. Um, right now, he crossed the frontiers, and he is in Sucre, in Bolivia. He also went with Joana to Paraguay, to Asuncion, and he, he's helping to create groups, uh, my, uh, meetup groups in different, in all of these uh, cities. So. Uh, he's doing everything uh, this uh, for free. He's trying, he's, uh, he's trying very hard to continue, but he needs our help. Actually, the community in Argentina is helping him so much. But if you want to help, uh, you can do it in argentinanpython.com.ar slash n slash donaciones. Uh, all his events are for free. And with the money, he can fix his car. He can get gas. He can print posters, stickers, T-shirts and banners and renting rooms for events. So I've already helped him, so now it's your turn. So thank you. Marcus, are you here to talk about Vim? Marcus, here to talk about Vim? Yes, fantastic. 
<laughs> All right, like, so we're probably going to overshoot our time, but at this stage, what are the conference organizers going to do? Like, drag us all physically out one after the other? I say we stay in here and try and finish our lightning talks. If they have to drag us off the stage, well, that won't be the first time that's happened to me. Okay. <laughs> After Marcus, we've got uh, iHeartPython by Alexis. Alexis, are you here? Yes, excellent. Do, do, do. Uh, what were we all talking about? Oh, yeah, 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 the Asimov story. And so in it, um, the computer goes away and programs and tries to figure out what jokes are. And it comes up after a long time of computation. It goes, well, I've got an answer. And the researcher's like, what is it, what is it? And the computer goes, well, you're not going to like it. So I recommend you don't ask me. And they go, no, 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 we want to know. And the computer goes, right, well, the only explanation I've figured out for jokes, given the fact that nobody can ever think of a joke that's been invented by someone, and given the fact that they seem to be psychologically inexplicable, the only explanation can possibly be is that there are complex psychological experiment being played on the human race by some sort of aliens that were in their sort of laboratory, and as a result of understanding that we're part of the experiment, the experiment is now ruined. And that means that the experiment is over and the researchers turn to one another, and none of them can remember a single joke. Dun, dun, dun. Yep, that's a classic 1950s short story science fiction there. <laughs> no, don't clap. I mean, you know, I know like I'm looking like I want approval for that, but you can just be like, eh, eh, you know, it was all right, yeah, it was okay. How are we doing over here? That looks pretty impressive. I guess I have to resize the windows to... Everyone, are this we, are year we? is the year of Linux on the desktop. But next year, next year is the year of Linux on the desktop. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> hmm? <laughs> Let's see, I, I think I'm, I'm set up now. Sure. Um, um, every, you know, we can, tell, we can tell another bad science fiction story. That's okay. Yeah, okay, so... So my name is Markus Törnqvist. It's not Markus Kribbles. I'm sorry you got my name wrong there, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to talk about, about Vim and NeoVim and uh, how to deal with them in Python. This was a very, very popular subject at the party. I was wearing my Vim shirt, but can't wear it today because it still smells like Wednesday evening. <laughs> so <laughs> I've been using Vim for for a ridiculously long time, like longer, longer than Python. So I'm one of those guys who remember when Vim 7 came out, stuff like that. So I've spent quite an amount of time customizing it. And I hope that if I show some tricks, at least you won't consider it an obsolete relic of the past and use Emacs instead. So here goes. So one of the main points in Vim is that it's, it's ridiculously fast to use because whenever you ty type something, you actually input commands. So you can do like in, in just a couple of keystrokes. Now, one of the downsides is that for things like highlighting, syntax highlighting errors, whatever, you need to write it first. That's, so I'm gonna get back to that, but relative line numbering Type in just where you want to go, like I see that I want to go four lines down, highlight the line, stuff like this, it all works. I go, I, I make a typo. Here, oh man, I, we need to see the bottom of the, okay, you're gonna have to take my word for it that it's actually saying which pep error it is, right? It's just the <laughs> bloody Linux desktop thing. Actually, I can, because this ah, is a, so this thinking. is a workaround. Yeah, expect two blanks, found one, cool. Write it out, it's fixed. And then there's autocomplete, which I was asked a lot about. I, I could just like uncomment the line, but where's the fun in that? It actually opens the doc strings up there with the Jedi Vim plugin, if that's what you want to do. I'm not sure I actually enjoy <laughs> the way it works, but you have the features that you would expect from a modern editor. Um, just as a side note, this thing here is called Nerd Tree, really convenient as well. It does things like syntax, um, what do you call it, folding. Folding is what it is, yep. <laughs> so a couple of words about NeoVim. 
doesn't really exist yet. I mean, it's a fork of Vim because Vim is, well, it's old, let's face it, but it, it's also not even written in NCC. It's, it's that old, doesn't accept patches very well and whatever, so someone wanted to have multi-threading so that you'd actually get rid of syntax errors without writing the file out and, and stuff like that. So the patch was rejected and then he forked it, forked Vim, raised some money on Kickstarter. And it's kinda hard to set up. You gotta download a daily build and preferably have a wrapper script here to launch it. But when you do, it actually looks pretty much the same. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there are things like like the syntax highlight or the autocomplete that doesn't actually work the same way. It, it does give you something, but it's it's not as fancy. So we have to wait for it to work a bit. So a lot of the stuff is from around 2008. And, and that's one thing that I think contributes to people thinking it's old is that, yeah, it, it was finished in 2008. It's it's not dead. It's It's just like, Venerable. <laughs> so, <laughs> Resting. <laughs> so some plugins, actually I don't have <laughs> Wi-Fi here, I couldn't get that to work. Thank you, thank you Linus Turvalds, you're a hero of our people. So couldn't get the wireless going, but Syntastic is uh, fantastic. I use it for, for the syntax checking, and this is probably, yeah, this is Jedi Vim. It, it does all the cool autocomplete stuff. Here's my Vim configuration, it's up on GitHub. Not very well documented, I only use it for myself, but in case someone wants to take a look at it. Also have my NeoVim, it's a lot more work in progress, but if you wanna take a look, just don't use it because kiddies get sad. <laughs> You're supposed to be inspired by other people's Vim configurations and use those to make your own. <laughs> That's what I did, and it's been a lot of fun over a lot of time. Three <laughs> years ago, seven months ago, yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> okay. Alexis, sign of Python. Three lightning talks left, everyone. There's a slight, slight aura of kind of of anticlimax, of depression in the air. The conference is finishing. We're full of happy memories and exciting ideas for what to do in the future. But we also know that, like the slightly magical holiday—no, no, it was work. It was hard work that we've been having for the last week is maybe coming to an end. But there is the sprints to look forward to. There are three more lightning talks. Marcus is one of them. Take it away. You're taking too long. Hmm? Okay, so oh, what just happened? I mean, everyone's struggling with their window manager. We are in 2015, right? And the first thing um, a guy named Bill Gates, I think, made is something like Windows, and we are still a lot of years after that uh, struggling with uh, putting Windows together, you know? So there is these other window managers that exist, you know, which are called um, Tiling window manager. You may have seen some weird people with a weird bar like that. Um, I think uh, our friend from uh, Argentina had one and other uh, talkers. So, well, it, the basic um, point is that each, each time you spawn a new window, it just splits it on the whole available space. So I'm not like trying to move pixel by pixel and anything, and I can just play with this. All right, so this is not related uh, for Python at <laughs> all. Actually, it's a i3 window manager, and it's written in C. It's very, very, very small, so like the footprint is peanuts, and the thing rendering the bar, the, that's called the i3 bar um, is called i3 status. And the configuration of i3 status is, whoa, it's okay, is uh, pretty straightforward, but when you configure your i3, you just say um, 
just spawn me an i3 status, and this is the default that you can see over here, which is pretty large. So the first thing I made is, let's tune it a bit, but I'm using Python, and this bar actually, if you check the clock on the top right, you can see that it's increasing five seconds by five seconds. And it's, everything is written in C, so you put these modules that you can use on the i3 bar, and so you can see that I'm one of the happy few connected to the Wi-Fi. <laughs> and that's pretty much it. So you're stuck with the, bar, the modules that i3 status provides you, which are written in C, so you can't do pretty much shit with it. Um, I, I can do, I can take, uh, I can say this, <laughs> not much audience now. Um, so I was like, how do I inject my Python code over there? How can I render this dynamic? And I, can, uh, I came up with this crazy idea uh, as to create a um, wrapper around i3 status because I, uh, I had done all this extensive work of configuring it. The configuration is like this. You put the modules you want and in the order you want and then you can have some configuration for them, all right? And I made a wrapper around it, okay. And what you can actually see is now the clock is ticking every second. Okay, no applause. That's not big, right? But this is Python, and I can now do more and write my own modules uh, for pretty much everything I want. So any script, you can get it to appear on your bar uh, up there. And let's change some pretty things now. Uh, what you just saw is that Pyro Status just took the actual configuration of i3 status, so that there is nothing to change, actually, but we just enabled uh, Python in uh, our i3 uh, tiling window manager. Sorry, I know, I'm, it's okay. Um, now I just want to show you one thing. Actually, you can't see shit, all right. Here I can start by removing some useless um, stuff from the bar. Damn, okay. <laughs> That's a pretty bad live demo, I guess. Um, what I meant to show is uh, I didn't expect that pretty low um, um, resolution here, is that you can have some, um, uh, there are some modules that come straight with um, by tree status that you can directly use, so you don't have to code them yourselves. Um, one of them is the X render, which uh, I guess <laughs> a lot of people could have used around here, and which is one of the reasons I just had to plug my thing here and take to some Python magic, and I can have it showing here, and then all my available modes are uh, available, and all I have to do is just right click and then hop, I can change my x render directly from my bar thanks to Python. And then you can make uh, even more um, things over here. I can just, I wrote a simple module, which is just an implementation of a class, which gives me the weather forecast for Paris, France. And another one which is pretty cool to me, at least, is a, a non-line status over here, and it's strange because the guy who wrote uh, i3 and the i3 bar protocol implemented the click event system, but i3 status doesn't uh, bring any support for this. So I would just want to show you that thanks to Python, I also made the click events really easy to do over here, and now I'm just gonna disconnect from here Thanks to Pytris Status. Bye bye. All right, penultimate talk, just because you can. Who is that? Someone called Just, maybe? Or maybe someone called Can? Or, or, or unlikely that the name was into the middle of it there. Come on up. 
Okay, there's a slight problem. I shut down my computer by accident. Oh, you got. Can uh, someone? Uh, <laughs> can someone? Uh, uh, can you tell a joke? <laughs> I'll tell you what. You can be the last lightning talk. So Guillaume, would you like to come up here? Do you need time to more time to prepare? Guillaume, no, come on up. It only takes uh, 10 seconds. You know. Okay. All right. We'll come to the front anyway, Guillaume. There you go. Sit in the front row. Then it'll be super fast. And when the conference organizers come along to like drag us all physically out, um, I'll tell them to neatly start from the back row and move one row forwards each time, starting from the ends of the rows, because you need the reverse algorithm from the acorn algorithm in order to evacuate the room. All righty. So let's see. What do you call? OK, yeah, yeah, here we go. Um, what do you get? if you cross the Atlantic with the Titanic? About, what do you get if you cross the Atlantic with the Titanic? About halfway. <laughs> Damn. Okay, so, so um, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna start. So th there's been a... <laughs> So many nice talks today, you know, and th there's this um, you know, terrible thing, you know, that uh, is bothering me for some while. So I'm gonna give a terrible talk about something terrible. But um, I need to start the slides. What the hell? <laughs> oh dear God! We need a joke. <laughs> yeah. Emergency joke. No problem. I had one in mind actually. Then, uh, <laughs> then I got, and then it, and it disappeared. What was it? I had the Atlantic and the Titanic. Ten kinds of people. The only ten kinds of people. Okay, no, that's a pretty classic. Um, okay, well, if I say the uh, if I say the joke, someone else should put up their hand and they'll be delegated to sell the punchline. So uh, there are only ten kinds of people in the world. Stand up, sir, stand up, sir or ma'am. Who's that over there? Tell the punchline. Uh, people who understand binary and zero. Yay! That reminds me of the two hardest programs in the two hardest problems in computer programming are uh, uh, what is it? Cache invalidation, variable naming, okay. and off by one errors. Uh, okay, <laughs> no, it's okay. All right, uh, knock yourself out. Yeah, so 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 uh, <laughs> so I can start. Yeah, yeah, yeah I want to get uh, get 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 it done because uh, I I always feel guilty about it. So. Okay, so um, uh, there was this nice talk about uh, you know uh, just because you can you shouldn't. But how would you know, right, if you don't try? <laughs> so, you know, I, I had to try, you know, so uh, do you think this sort of uh, container class would be possible? So uh, let me give another example. You know, so there's the same object, fields, and you could just slap on the fields. You know, so raise your hand if you think it's possible. Mm. Okay. Oh. Okay. <coughs> so uh, uh, raise your hand if you think it shouldn't. <laughs> oh. Okay. Oh, oh, it's it's kind of encouraging. Okay. Uh, so. <laughs> okay. So I actually shown this to a few people. So <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, 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 it's quite, quite controversial, you know, so uh, if, you, if you're going to kind of punish me for this, you know, the, the, I already ho heard these, so <laughs> you, you have to be original. <laughs> so, but but uh, it also has features, right, so you can, it gets worse, you can have oh. defaults. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, well. Uh, so, I'm terribly sorry, I mean, but uh, whatever you do, don't, don't make bug reports because then I'm going to fix them and then <laughs> it's going to get better. <laughs> don't, don't, don't even start it on GitHub, don't, <laughs> because then it will become popular and, you know, people will use it, so. I'm so sorry, sorry. I just had to do it. Guillaume Galin on Qtile. There he is, the final lightning talk, everyone. I 
was reminded of a good little joke there for a minute, but it disappeared again. I said, oh, wait, 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 wait. No, it's gone. Oh, wait. Oh, that, what was that then? The hardest problems in computer science, one, two, three, ha, ha. Uh, I also read somewhere that the, uh, uh, the hardest problem in computer science is not being an obnoxious asshole about everything, uh, which is another way of thinking about it. I certainly, that applies to me. I find that hard. Da -da -da. Yeah. Oh, yeah, here we are. Okay, so it's a meeting of the uh, Third Reich's uh, Natural Resources Extraction Committee. Um, and uh, one of the, the Nazis giving the report goes, oh, yeah, um, it looks like um, we've been uh, extracting too many resources. We've been mining too many resources from the hills above Hamburg. Um, and uh, one of the Nazis goes, well, mine less. And then grammar Nazi bursts in and says, mine fewer. And Hitler says, yes. <laughs> I really like that one. <laughs> Mine fewer. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. hmm? Sorry? What's Stannis? Oh, over there, yep. Yeah. What? 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 It wasn't Führer, it was Stannis. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm pretty new with the screen. Well, you take your time. Like, we, we've got plenty of time for me to just be confused a little bit longer. Right? So, it, was, it was Stannis. Stannis. Stannis Baratheon. Right. Okay. Right, right. A and he made a mind fewer. No, made a. There was a Game of Thrones joke. Yeah. Does he? Does he? Does he? Yeah, all the time. Okay. Uh, hmm. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah. Stannis. Yeah. Yeah. If only I had access to Google right now, I could probably appear more intelligent. We don't have the exo brain plugged in at the moment. Do, 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 do. <laughs> is this a presentation about how a tiling window manager makes it much easier to output <laughs> to a presentation display? <laughs> this is because I need by three statues. <laughs> yeah. Are you ready to go? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. Okay, take it away, Guillaume, our last lightning talk for today. So yeah, I'm very sorry this is the last lightning talk because like I made this lightning talk during the lightning talks. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I'm going to talk a bit about Qtile. Um, at the previous PyCon, there was a guy called Matt Harrison who made an excellent lightning talk about Qtile. Uh, I will give you the link at the end of the talk. And um, this talk made me use Qtile actually. So hey, Matt. And um, yeah, he made some statistics about uh, window manager used by people. So I'd like to verify those statistics a bit. So who's using KDE or GNOME? All right. Uh, who's using a tiling window manager? Okay, that's a minority. And who is using Qtile? <laughs> All right. Um, so Qtile is a tiling window manager, uh, which is written in Python. So that's actually very neat. So um, I have this, uh, this config. It is the Qtile config, so it's pretty neat. Like It's just like some Python to configure your window manager. So yeah, OK. Um, I can switch mode. I can uh, pop some windows. That's cool. Okay, I can move windows around, great. I can make them floating, all right, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, Is that a tiling window manager that wasn't tiling right there? <laughs> Why? Well, because it's like floating. That's the opposite of what I thought we were supposed to do. 
Anyway, it looks great. Starship it's styling. Show. Well, um, so the neat thing about it is you can do some things like that. Fuck. <laughs> what? Ah, lib q tag. All right. Cool. So I can. Wood. Yeah. Okay. Great. I can have uh, some information <coughs> about the current group. And actually, as you can see, uh, my my groups are called one, two, three, four. So it's pretty basic. And I can do something like this. Here it is. <laughs> so um, yesterday there was another lightning talk about uh, something about Python and bytecode. Like I want, I don't want to open uh, my uh, Python object files. Okay, um, I have a, a small a small trick for that guy. So don't. Yeah, there is an option for that for Python to not write byte files. Uh, so there it is. Uh, so you have the Qtile website, everything. <laughs> and uh, I made a, a small link for the um, mad presentation. Thanks. All right, give Guillaume a big hand. Give a good hand to all of the Lightning Talk presenters from today, from yesterday, Thursday, from Wednesday, from Monday. Give a big hand to everybody that's given a talk or had a tutorial. Give a big hand to all of the organizers. Give a big hand to yourselves. You've all been wonderful. It's such a pleasure being here. I am personally enormously grateful to be part of this community. Obviously, I'm grateful to be up here on screen. Uh, clearly, Guillaume hadn't quite finished his presentation. Was there something else you wanted to say, Guillaume? No, he's off. Oh, my God. So you guys are amazing. This was a lovely week. I hope you're all going to come for the sprints. I hope several of you have decided to come for the sprints, even though they weren't going to come. Thank you all very much. Good night. Have a lovely evening. Have a lovely weekend. Have a lovely life. See you next year. EuroPython 2016. See you at future conferences. See you at PyCon UK. Good night, all. Good night, good night, good night, good night, good night, good night.